everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and I am a flight attendant for a major US airline. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you my everyday flight attendant look. So I'm gonna be getting ready with you, but also answering some of y'all's burning questions. And some of these did not hold back. All right, do you have lip fillers? Ooh. So definitely stay tuned in the video from beginning to end because I will also be dropping a huge hint for you guys on something that's coming soon that you're absolutely not going to know unless you watch this video and you watched it through. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it and without further ado, let's dive in. Now, obviously, as you can see, I just dyed my hair black yesterday. I might have some black around my face still. I'm sorry, but you guys decided this. I said on my Instagram, should I go black or should I stay red? And black one, even despite my husband's wishes to stay red, I went and listened to y'all and went black. Not only did I let y'all choose my hair color, but I told y'all to ask me some questions in this video. So if you're not following me on Instagram and you want to participate in some of my vlogs or even my daily life go over there and follow me now okay so first and foremost I'm gonna be doing my foundation so I'm gonna pull some of this hair back I got a lot of hair y'all so I knew if I made this like hair and makeup we were gonna be here forever I'm also gonna be trying to tell you what I'm using as I'm using it throughout this makeup tutorial but if I mess up I will have everything down in the description below so any products that I am using you can go down there and check them out so also in this video I will be using both of my lug trolley makeup cases so right now my makeup is kind of divided between the two bags but I do have a video showing y'all how I pack my makeup bag so if y'all want to check that out after this video Go on over there and see that, but I will have both of these linked down below for you also. So for primer, I use the NYX Honey Do Me Up, which as you can see, I pretty much need a new bottle of this. We're just gonna generously kind of wipe it. Okay, so while this gets like just a little bit tacky on my face and gets ready for the foundation, let's jump into some of the questions y'all ask. If you weren't a flight attendant or YouTuber, what would have been your backup career? I've already wet my sponges and cleaned them and everything. Thing. So if they're stained, they're stained, but they are cleaned. Okay, so for my foundations, I use Dermablend Leg and Body Makeup, and this has sunscreen SPF 25. This is very oily, whereas I also use my Dermacol, and this is in the shade 108. This is in Light Natural, this one. So I just mixed together the two, I'll show it to you. But this is very thick, full coverage. This is meant to be able to cover tattoos, but sometimes it gets like a little bit of cakey consistency. So I like to add a little bit of this because it's a little bit more oily. So what would I be doing for a career? Well, I went to college for veterinary medicine or animal behavior. So I thought maybe like a wildlife biologist or something. So if I wanted to get into that, I could always go back and do that or go back to school and, and finish out getting like my master's or my PhD. But I probably would get into television. I think that would be fun, like acting or I don't know, behind the scenes. I have no idea. I think like media and that kind of stuff is fun. I enjoy doing YouTube. I enjoy being on camera. I enjoy editing the film. So that would be an option as well. So as you can see, I just did like a very small dot of that Dermacol. And so then I'm going to add just a little bit of this. Now this color you can probably see is a lot darker, but together they're going to mix very nicely into my shade. And like, I don't need much at all. And this is by far going to cover my entire face. Are you allowed to take an extra suitcase to bring stuff back from a different city? Yes, you are allowed. Usually you're just going to have to pay to check the suitcase. I, I pretty much travel carry on only. I have a whole video on like how I actually pack my carry on and stuff. What is your next tattoo going to be? My sleeve is unfinished. So my next tattoo is probably gonna just be filling in my sleeves and the empty spaces and doing a whole filler through that. Any advice for traveling internationally with a two year old from a flight attendant's point of view? Definitely go check out Wonderfully Allie's channel. She's a mom and a flight attendant. She is going to be much better with the kid questions than I am, but my only advice advice really because I don't have kids so like take it for what you will is bring entertainment like bring something to entertain your two-year-old because those flights are so long and kids get bored all the time and then they want to run up and down like the aisles and stuff and it kind of just gets in the way of service because there's a lot of levels of service for flight attendants on those flights bring snacks if they don't want to eat airplane food and definitely bring entertainment so now moving on I'm going to be using this but I really don't want to recommend it to you and the reason for this is because this is the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the HD High Definition Concealer 
and this shade is cool tan and I use this actually to like kind of like cream contour before I go in with my powders and I like to go dark and then add the light into it but the reason I don't want to recommend this to you is because I also started using like the LA girl pro coverage foundation as well and both of these have a lot of oil to it so I thought they were going to be great for my dry skin but they actually made me break out so if you have like a good cream concealer recommend it to me down below but also comment down below your favorite makeup products because I really want to try out some new makeup stuff so let me know down below what are some of your favorite makeup products so that way I can check them out as well how hard is it to become a flight attendant after you're 40 it's always difficult. You're competing with so many people. They say it's harder to become a flight attendant statistically than it is to get into Harvard. And that's just because there's so many people that apply, but only so few actually get selected and get the job. But I will say at the age of 40, you do have like a little bit of an advantage at that point because you probably have a lot more customer service experience versus a 20 year old. But I would say doesn't matter your age. It's always going to be difficult to become a flight attendant. Just keeping it honest. How strict is your airline about your makeup and uniform? I would say when you're on probation, so probation can kind of last from your first six months out of training to sometimes like your first year out of training. When you're on probation, you need to be on your P's and Q's. They are going to be so strict with you, so strict. I would say after you get off probation, it gets a little bit less strict. Right now I would say, my airline's not very strict about that stuff, but I see that changing in the very near future. And by very near, I'm saying like in a month, I definitely see that changing with my airline, 100%. I don't wanna get this stuff in my hair because when I get makeup in my hair, it makes my hair look like it's actually gray, even though it's not. But yeah, I would say right now, my airline isn't as strict as it's going to be in a month. In a month, I definitely see it's gonna start getting a lot stricter. And we're gonna go ahead and contour that double chin on down. Were your tattoos not an issue in your airline? Just wanted to ask, love ya. Love you too. Tattoos are not an issue with my airline. Look at this sponge, dang. Uh, yeah, but anyways, tattoos are not an issue with my airline as long as they're not visible. So if you can keep your tattoos covered up and never, ever, ever, ever under any circumstances seen, tattoos are not an issue. But I also have a whole video on like tattoos and like the interview process. So definitely go check that out if you are concerned about your tattoos. If a medical emergency happens on board, are there nurses or are you trained? So when we have like a medical issue on board, the first thing that we wanna do is call for a medical professional. So somebody who's trained like a doctor or somebody who can better handle situations like that. We are also trained on situations like that so we do have to go through a lot of intense medical training and stuff but also we have the ability to call a POC so that's like a physician on call so we can actually call physicians from our tablets and talk to them as well I mean if there's a medical issue on board you pretty much have your bases covered with a lot of professional help do you ever think about quitting your job and doing a new one I really love my job I really love my job I love my company I love my job I love a lot of that stuff so I don't see me getting a different job anytime soon. Am I gonna be a career flight attendant and do this for the rest of my life? I don't know. I mean, I'm only 26, so like a lot can change. So I really, really don't know if I'm gonna be a career flight attendant, but I have no plans in the foreseeable future to quit my job or leave or do something else. I'm just gonna do the bottom of my lip. I'll do a little bit on the top. Oh yeah, yeah, that was quite a bit. Okay, I'm gonna blend this, and even though it's crooked, I'll blend that out too, so I'm not really too concerned favorite thing about being a flight attendant and negative thing about it my favorite thing about being a flight attendant is never having to be in the same place for too long i'm definitely one of those people that i always need change i'm consistently needing change whether that's with my hair my location my whatever i love change so not having to stay in the same place is fantastic and obviously getting to see lots of new cities is amazing and my least favorite is dealing with difficult customers. I mean, it's just a part of my job, so you have to take the good with the bad. When you're just there, like really to have like a good time, to work, to make your coin, and then you have people screaming at you and being like ridiculously rude to you. Now, if you have an attitude and they get an attitude with you, what did you expect, you know what I mean? But when you're being nice and somebody's just like being so rude to you, that sucks. What is your favorite thing about being on YouTube? Getting to meet and interact with a lot of y'all. I mean, I do the whole thing by myself, so actually being able to respond to everybody is, it's impossible. I have hundreds, 
hundreds of pending direct messages on my Instagram or like comments on my YouTube or on my Facebook, which I'm not even really active on Facebook to be honest. I only really post whenever like I post a video and then I post on there that I post a video. So getting to respond to everybody is so difficult, but having right now 81,000 people care about you, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. That's so surreal to me. That's so incredibly surreal. Like I have to be careful cause I'll cry. I'll cry in an instant. I'm a little whiny baby, but that just like touches my heart. My husband is blowing up my phone. Boo, you supposed to be working, leave me alone. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with concealer. I'm gonna use the Tarte Double Duty and this is 8B Porcelain Beige. This is for your, your ghostly girls like myself. How do you deal with being a flight attendant and missing time with your husband? <coughs> You want the truth? Y'all want the real truth on this? I feel like you need to miss somebody to continue to love somebody. My aunt tells her husband this all the time. They've been married for just like a ridiculously long time and she tells him that all the time. Like I need to miss you to continue to love you and I feel like it's the exact same. I mean, when you're up somebody's butt all the time, it's, I think space is good. So I think being a flight attendant and adding a little bit of space actually keeps your marriage and your relationships really healthy in my opinion. Now, obviously other people are going to complain completely disagree with me and that is a-okay. We are all entitled to our own opinion, but I think the space actually adds some healthiness back into the relationship. Okay, so I'm actually going to start my concealer over here on my nose so that way I can kind of fix up this contour. So we're gonna dot it here. And a little bit of concealer goes a long way. So one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize when they get like so much creasing and caking and stuff is because you're using too much product. And a lot of the stuff I use is full coverage, but I don't use a lot of it. I'm gonna really kind of just conceal from here and then work it into the nose and kind of like edge up the contour. I'm gonna put a little bit on my chin because I don't have like a pointy chin so I try and like create that illusion that my chin is a little bit longer. I am not going to be putting any on my forehead because I feel like that creates like more cakiness up here so I actually am gonna leave my forehead alone and I'm just gonna put just a wee bit on the nose to kind of fix what I did. But I think the other thing that's kind of like a misconception that people don't realize is like, as a flight attendant, you're actually home a lot, especially compared to other travel jobs. And you're never gone for more than like three days at a time. Because even if you're on a four day trip, you're only gone for three of those days and on the fourth day you're coming back. So realistically, unless you're like a super high time flyer, you're gonna spend a lot of time at home too. So really don't think of it as like that much time away. I feel like it's just enough time away to be like beneficial to you, if that makes sense. Requirements to becoming a flight attendant. My attendant last night was like 70. I mean, a lot of people make careers out of this. So once they start, they do not quit. But I do have a whole video on requirements to becoming a flight attendant. And I don't want this whole video just to be about that because it definitely could be. So definitely go check that video out. I'll have it linked down below for you. If you could wear only three items of makeup, which would they be? So if I could only have three items of makeup, it would definitely be eyeliner, eyelash glue, eyelashes. Easy. I live in Dallas. Do you get your lashes done or do you use falsies? They always look great. I do not get my lashes done. I use false strips. I don't want to get like too in detail about who I use yet. I feel like that's such a giveaway. I feel like if you're watching this video, I just gave you like the biggest drop of the mic. I'll let you know very soon whose lashes I use. What is your least favorite place to lay over? I can pretty much find fun anywhere. My least favorite type of layovers are short layovers. Don't care where the layover is. If it's short, I'm not gonna like it. I specifically love this job for my layovers because my money comes mostly from YouTube and not from being a flight attendant. So being a flight attendant, I do it because I get great layovers and because I have a great time with my crews and things like that. I don't care where the layover is. If it's a long layover, I'm gonna love it. If it's a short layover, I'm gonna hate it. But destination wise, I don't really care. I love to do international stuff. I, I mean, I chase international trips. So if it's international, I'm gonna love it a lot more than domestic. What airline do you really want to work for? This one. <laughs> I love my company. I love my company. My company, okay. Every airline has stuff that you're not going to like or every airline has their own thing that it's just, sometimes sucks, but truth be told, if I had to list all the airlines I would wanna work for, my company is still gonna be number one. Still gonna be number one. I don't, I don't want to work for another airline. And I saw that question in there too, is like, if you had to work for a different airline, who would you work for? Honestly, my company is still number one. I still love my company, but if I had to choose a different airline to work for, I would probably choose an international airline. 
that would probably be my go-to or I would choose a private airline. I know that kind of doesn't narrow down like the actual airlines, but I feel like if I got out of this airline, I would want to fly for an international airline or I would want to probably go to the private side of things. So yeah. Have you ever been nervous to fly? If so, how and when did you overcome your fear? I've never been a nervous flyer. I've been flying since I was really young, but I do have a video on fear flying. I know like I keep like sending y'all off to other videos, but I do have a whole video on like how to overcome a fear of flying. Thoughts on getting another dog. So we tried to get a second dog. This has already been a thing for us. We have definitely tried to get a second dog. For those of you who don't know, I'm gonna get, I'm actually gonna update y'all a little bit about Bubba because we've gotten some really sad news as of lately and I've been back and forth as to whether to tell y'all. So I'm actually going to be using my Cody Airspun setting powder now. This is in translucent extra coverage. And instead of like when I first take the powder to set my under eyes, I'm not gonna go in right underneath. I'm gonna go in and then add in here because if you start here and you get a lot of powder, that's really when you're gonna get a lot of creasing and clumping. Okay, so do we plan on getting another dog? We really tried, but um, Bubba wasn't having it. So we adopted Bubba at 12, he's 13 now, and he does not get along well with other dogs. And we've thought about putting him into training to maybe get along with other dogs because we have the financial situation, we have the space, we have the ability to have another dog. I'm totally into animal rescue. I'm a sucker for animals, really am. That's why I went to college for it. I'm such a sucker for it. So if I could have like all of the dogs, all of them, I would have all of them, I, I realistically would. But I can't do that to Bubba because Bubba was our first dog and he doesn't get along well with other dogs. I can't see myself doing that to him. Like he'd have to go through training to be able to get along with another dog. But a little bit of an update on Bubba. We just recently went to the vet, which if you're following me on Instagram, you probably know this. We knew this was going to be a possibility because when we adopted Bubba, we took him to the vet shortly after. And when we first adopted him, he was heartworm negative. But then when we took him to the vet, he kept coming back inconclusive. And this happened two separate times, which basically means he did not have enough mature female heartworms to test positive. And since we've had him, he's been on heartworm prevention. But this time when we did take him to the vet, he did come back with a completely positive. There was no doubt about it. He has heartworms, which I'm not gonna cry. I've cried for days on end. He's also been having like a little bit issues eating and we didn't know if this was like an underlining issue. He has not wanted to eat. He's been very selective on what he's willing to eat. So we're still keeping an eye on that, but we got all his blood work back yesterday and his blood work came back great. Came back very, very good for a palm 13 years old, which is fantastic to hear. That was like the best news I've ever gotten. Cause like, trust me when I tell y'all I've been crying for the last few days, I've been crying for the last few days. Your girl's a sap. I'm an emotional sap and like that's my son. That is like my son. So hearing stuff like that, that hurt, that hurt bad. But anyways, we have a, a vet that we're greatly working with, which is fantastic. We're in contact with somebody, we're taking care of it. But yeah, that's kind of a little bit of Bubba update news just for y'all. I just know that Bubba's like a huge part of like me and my family. And I feel like y'all are family. Like I know that sounds a little like cuckoo, but like I feel like y'all are family. So I feel like I need to like share that with y'all that we are going through that with Bubba. Do you want any kids? So I actually got asked this after I announced I was getting a boob job too, because I think a lot of people, I'm going in with donut on this palette, the low fee AL, and I'm also using e.l.f. ultimate blending brush. And that was kind of, this big old brush was an e.l.f. complexion brush. Yeah, I saw this quite a bit whenever I announced that I was getting my boobs done, as a lot of people like wanted to know like, are you having kids? Because you should probably wait to have kids until you get your boobs done. And the answer is no, we, we don't intend to have kids. When I imagine my future, I don't imagine it with kids. Now granted, I'm only 26, so that's not to say I can't change my mind, but I am taking active measures to make sure that I don't have kids. And I don't think we're going to. I, I think we're completely content not having kids. Have you ever been on a cruise? Yes, I went on a whole European cruise with my mom and absolutely loved it, so that was cool. What was the worst and best things about flight attendant training? I did get a bunch of questions about training. I know a lot of y'all are about to get ready to go to training and I do have a whole training video. So definitely, definitely, definitely go check that video out. Again, I know these are all shameless plugs into my other videos, but I do have a video on that for you. When I did training for regional, I stayed at the hotel. So I met like lots of people. And obviously that's always gonna be my number one is when you get to meet lots of people. But when I did my mainline training, it was in Dallas 
Dallas, so I actually just stayed at home. So I didn't get to meet as many people, which ironically enough, a lot of people that I went to training with, I became like really good friends with them after training when we got onto the line and actually not in training. So that's a little ironic, but yeah. The worst thing about being in training is the food because obviously like you're either making like no money or like very, very little money while you're in training. So a lot of times they do provide you with food, but you are gonna get so sick of it so quickly. It's the same stuff over and over and over and over again. So be prepared on that. Would you see yourself in maybe recruiting training? So I would actually love to do recruiting. I would love that. But I'm gonna go ahead and contour this this chin while we're talking about this. So when you're contouring your chin, don't contour like this. Literally go under it and like get under there. So anyways, I would love to do recruiting. I think that would be ridiculously fun. I would love that, absolutely. But I think because of my YouTube channel, that would be considered a conflict of interest because I talk to y'all before you go do your interviews or I help you and give you advice and stuff. And so let's say that I talked to one of y'all and I was helping you out and then suddenly I'm in recruiting and I see you. That's a conflict of interest. So I don't think that they would actually allow me to be in the recruiting department, even though I would love to. I would absolutely love that. I would love to be able to do the interviews and stuff like that. I've always wondered if flight attendants can accept tips. Y'all are awesome. So actually this is funny enough. This is an elf crease brush. I'm gonna go in and just very, very lightly like contour up my nose. So certain airlines can accept tips and certain airlines are actually encouraged to accept tips. Whereas other airlines, it's like in our contract that we're not supposed to be able to accept tips. So that completely varies from airline to airline. So now I'm actually gonna go back in. So here's like my nose contour and it might appear more blended on camera than it is, but I'm gonna go back in with my beauty blender and kind of just blend that so it doesn't look like I contoured my nose. What annoys you most when getting ready? My hair, my hair. It's absolutely my, there's no question about it. I have some thick hair. It sheds like crazy. It's, it's naturally curly. And when it wants to participate, when it's being curly and it wants to be beautiful, it's beautiful. When it doesn't want to be beautiful, I have to straighten it and I have to like mess with it. And it takes me hours, it takes me hours. When will you be able to work out after surgery? So for those of you who don't know, I'm getting a breast augmentation done in just a couple days actually. So the doctor cleared me at three weeks. You can do cardio stuff, which I don't know that I'll be doing. I might go hiking and stuff. I do like hiking. I'm not a cardio fan unless like I'm cutting and I have to do it, but I can't actually weight lift until six weeks after surgery and you have to ease into it. So you have to go like legs first and then go towards upper body. So that's going to be extremely difficult, extremely difficult for me to be out of the gym for six weeks. You have to heal properly. Like you really want to heal properly. What do flight attendants think about people who disinfect their seats and wear face masks? So I'm going to be moving on over to this Morphe palette. It's totally broken. It's an eyeshadow palette. Looks like this. this is my like go-to palette. It's not my only palette, but this is my like staple palette. It just has like a lot of beautiful neutrals, which I love. This is their 35W palette. And I'm going to be taking this eco tools blush brush and i'm actually going to be going into like these two shades right here and i'm going to use them as blush and i'm going to keep the blush over here and not over here. What do we think about people who disinfect their seats and use face masks? So truthfully, that seat probably could have used some disinfection. Like <laughs> So i really i don't i don't care. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to disinfect your tray table, disinfect your tray table. I've seen people put their feet on tray tables and then you eat off of it. Keep that in mind. So if you wanna use a wipe down and, and wipe your tray table down, I highly encourage that, good for you. You don't wanna be like absolutely obnoxious, like don't bring a whole cleaning crew bag in there, but if you wanna like wipe your stuff down, like go for it. If you wanna wear a face mask, go for it. I don't care one bit. All right, so now I'm gonna be doing highlight. So I actually like when my contour, my blush, and my highlight are all well blended. I don't want like a, a layer cake. So sometimes I blend my brush a little bit into my contour and I'm gonna blend my highlight above and into my blush. It just creates like a really natural, beautiful sparkle. And I'm gonna be using Lit and Stardust, a little bit of both mixed together and a small tapered elf brush. How did you make things work on a first year flight attendant salary? Let me keep it honest with y'all. Let me keep it honest with y'all. When I first started my first year as a flight attendant was for a regional airline. And at the time it was the lowest paid regional airline. So I was making no money and I completely lived off my savings. Let me, let me just keep it real. But like my tips for people that are first year flight attendants and maybe you're taking a pay cut to become a flight attendant, then definitely save up your money beforehand and pick up trips. Like if you can pick up flying, pick up some extra flying because that's just gonna be a little bit extra money in your pocket. 
and it'll be easier than trying to get a second job as a first year flight attendant. When you're first going into it, you've got a lot to learn. Your schedule's crazy. So trying to balance a second job can be really challenging. So actually to pick up flying is going to help you versus trying to get a second job. Now I'm actually going to take Supernova and just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm going to just kind of swipe right here very softly. What is this? It's another Ecos tool brush looks like this and I'm actually going to go into lit and I'm going to highlight the inner corners of my eye go underneath my eyebrow and this is by Anjou and these are like Amazon brushes I'm going to go into lit and just get like just a wee bit of highlight on my nose and a wee bit I point my head down and then do like a small line here and just make sure that's really nicely blended and subtle. I fill in my eyebrows with eyeshadow. I've used a pencil and stuff, but most for the most part, I usually use eyeshadow. What is the piercing policy for flight attendants? I have a belly ring, but you'll never see it. Okay, so this brush is by Real Techniques and it's just like an eyeshadow brush. So piercings for most airlines are gonna be like no visible piercings except for you can have one ear piercing and it needs to be a quarter size ring or smaller very subtle jewelry every now and again you can find an airline that will allow two piercings in your ears now if your piercing is not visible like your belly button like you're never going to see it then obviously they're not going to care but if it's like a Monroe a tongue an eyebrow anything like that they're going to want that out unless it's for like religious purposes that you have that they're going to absolutely want it out of your face do not show up with it in your interview at all Oh. So I'm actually going to go into this dark shade down here and I'm going to fill in my eyebrows. It's not black, but I feel like if I did black, it's going to be like too crazy. So I'm just doing like a dark brown and that'll be plenty enough. What's your best advice when making a resume for a flight attendant application to include stuff? I've heard so many times that people like don't include certain stuff like their school education and things like that. You need to include that. Understand they are looking for customer service experience. So put the jobs that you've done that relate the most to customers and maybe underneath the job you might want to add like I don't know two three bullet points of what exactly you did that was customer service related but definitely lead with your best foot forward don't leave stuff out your tattoos are pretty close to your wrist when you lift up to the overhead bin do they show just wondering because I just applied for a flight attendant today and have a tattoo on my wrist so personally no my tattoos don't show when I lift up my stuff like I mean as you can see I just did it if they did or if I'm wearing certain uniform pieces that I think that they might I would actually get like one of those little like blendable wrist things so you'll see like sometimes like bikers use them so they're like little stretchy fabrics just to give me that extra layer of protection to make sure that my wrist tattoos don't show so I would try and find something that was like skin tone color to really blend in so that would be my tip of advice to you I do know people with wrist tattoos that have been hired by airlines and really 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 what they're looking for is that it's never going to be visible but also like that really varies greatly on who you're applying for as well like keep that in mind some airlines are going to be like absolutely no tattoos whatsoever it doesn't matter you're not allowed to have them whereas other airlines aren't going to matter as much as long as they stay covered and you need to reiterate that you understand that and they will forever stay covered one eyebrow down and filled in how do you make friends as a flight attendant do you ever work flights with the same people so making friends as a flight attendant is difficult because like we do have like crazy schedules and whether that's like making friends with other flight attendants or just with like normal earth people yeah that's difficult because you have a crazy schedule and like if you're making friends with other flight attendants they have crazy schedules so it can be very challenging and you can meet people that you love and that you get along with really well and then never see them again versus you can meet people and like see them all the time so i personally i sit standby a lot as a commuter in charlotte like i bid for standby sit standby a lot but also a lot of other commuters do that as well so i'll start seeing some of the same faces by sitting standby even though my base isn't like the largest base but it's a fairly large base now I would say I still run into the same people but I also call them like airport friends so I have friends that I might not text on a day-to-day -day, but when I see them in the airport that's like my best friend do you understand friendships are very weird as a flight attendant but you are going to make friends 
and you're definitely gonna make friends in training but when you first become a flight attendant the first six months are gonna be the hardest they're gonna be the loneliest you're gonna realize you spend a lot of time in your hotel rooms alone and a lot of times you're dealing with like people that have kind of already been doing this for a long time and they just want to slam click so you do spend a lot of time alone and that would be my number one thing that I think that this job really teaches you is like how to be comfortable in your own space but before it teaches you that you're gonna be uncomfortable in your own space because like when I first became a flight attendant eating alone actually I'm gonna go in with literati right here I'm gonna just make sure that this foundation stuff is like all blended i don't want to set that into my eye thing so i'm gonna go into literati and like just put it all over my eyelid except for at the very top yeah when i first became a flight attendant um i didn't want to eat by myself i didn't want to do things by myself i didn't really like that now as a flight attendant some of my favorite layovers are just like me doing my own thing i don't have to worry about anybody else and i just do what i want to do and i take y'all along with me sometimes i mean y'all see it sometimes i'm with other people and sometimes i'm not and it just depends on who you're flying with and where you're going and how long the layover is and stuff like that it really greatly depends it's just more challenging than like a normal job where you see the same faces over and over and over again but also understand sometimes like you'll fly with some people like maybe your personality just doesn't get along with them or maybe they're crazy maybe i don't maybe they're crazy yeah okay i said it i said it and was but yeah you'll fly with some people that you might just not get along with and then you never have to see them again you fly that one trip and you never have to see their face again so there are pluses and minuses to that whole thing all right do you have lip fillers Ooh, thank you no i don't i do not have lip fillers i never got into that trend i don't hate lip fillers but i don't think i need lip fillers and i think like lip fillers go from from good to crazy really quickly. So it's just, it hasn't been a thing that I've I've been into. So these are my natural lips. They're probably always going to be my natural lips. If that changes, I'll be sure to let you know. I'll, I'll tell you anything, but I don't think that's gonna change. I think they're always just gonna look like this with a big old crack in the middle. <laughs> What's some dreams you have for yourself in the next five years? really like build myself and build my brand around me so i have a lot of goals on that i want to see where youtube takes me i love youtube i really love youtube i mean don't get me wrong like i spend a lot of time like working and trying to edit and film and do all this like my schedule is crazy like my schedule is literally crazy usually but i love it and i i wouldn't change it i absolutely adore it so next five years goal would be like building my brand and just to let y'all know because i didn't say anything um this color over here is what i'm taking and I'm just kind of building right in there. It doesn't even have like a label on it. I don't know who made this brush. And I'm gonna go in with this color right here and just kind of do like the little ends right there and blend it out. What is the most underrated city you have visited? Portland, Maine. I love Portland, Maine. I think it's totally underrated. I loved that city. We went to like an observation deck and like lots of pubs and stuff. And I'm not even a beer drinker like at all, but I loved that. I, I love Portland, Maine. I think that's a very underrated city, but I also love Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon is, is probably one of my favorite domestic layovers for sure. So like those are two really, really great cities. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like, but obviously like it's not blended, it looks a little crazy. So I'm gonna go back in with this first brush that I did like the whole eye thing on and then just blend, 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 blend. Oh, that's funny. What is your go-to alcoholic drink? Need inspiration, tequila shots. <laughs> I love tequila shots. I love Don Julio. That's my bae. Don Julio, oh yeah, yeah, tequila shots. But if you're like talking about like real drinks, I mean, I do think a tequila shot's a real drink, but if you like me like drink, drink, margaritas. I love margaritas. I love a good glass of like dessert wine, but like, yeah, tequila and margaritas are, that's it. You ever wanna send me a gift? I did get a P.O. box. I'm gonna start putting my P.O. box down below. So if y'all ever wanna like send me stuff, that'll be down below. So if you're trying to send me like a bottle of Don Julio, or... <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm not expecting any gifts from y'all at all, like at all. I'm just saying I did get a P.O. box. So whether you wanna write me a letter or send me a postcard or I don't, I don't know, send it my way. So yeah, maybe like sometimes on here, I'll just show y'all what I'm getting or something. That'd be cool. But anyways, so yeah, I'll start putting a P.O. box down below because I did it 
get one of those. Oh, okay, this one's controversial. Do you support reserving exit row for six feet three people and above passengers? Listen to the full answer before you judge me. Okay, so I'm done with my eyeshadow. It looks very natural, looks very blended. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do, I gotta get into the mini. We've matched. This is cute. I'm I'm a sucker for cheetah print. I think most of y'all know that. I'm a sucker and I think the lining of this one is so pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on some chapstick right now because my lips are chapped. I need to drink some water. This is the Vaseline Lip Therapy and Aloe. My lips look crazy right now because I have foundation and, and now this on there. Listen to my whole answer before you judge it. My answer is no. I don't think that they should reserve the exit row for people that are six foot three and above, but but, 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 my reasoning for this is because I don't think that it's fair that anybody should be squished. Whether you're six foot, six foot three up, or I don't know, five foot, you shouldn't feel squished in a seat. So I, I don't think that they should necessarily reserve an exit row for somebody that's of a certain height and taller. I think they need to do a better job of making sure that everybody has room. You shouldn't have to reserve rows for tall people. You should just make sure that everybody has enough space to feel comfortable. But nowadays they wanna put more seats on the plane, they wanna make more money. So in turn, they have to take room out of the aisle so your bag gets caught. We've all been there. We've all been there when you're taking your bag down the aisle and it's catching on every seat and getting like super caught up on the seats as you're going down or you're like squished in your little seat or you have no leg room or things like that. I think they need to do a better job of giving people their room back, their space back. They need to stop reducing people and start giving them like a little bit of extra space. So no, I don't think that they should necessarily reserve those rows just because you're tall. I think they need to do a better job of giving everybody space equally, but that's my opinion. Now, if you don't like my opinion, judge it from here, okay? So if you didn't like what I just said, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm actually going to do my eyeliner. Now my eyeliner is gonna be sisters, not twins. <laughs> my eyeliner is forever sisters, not twins. Don't judge it. it, it is what it is. What all does your flight attendant tablet do? So our tablets actually do a lot and I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but like our flight attendant manuals are on that tablet. Um, our ability to like check people out and like ring you out like when you purchase somebody is on that tablet. Our announcements are on the tablet. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on that tablet that we do, but like obviously like certain stuff I just can't discuss. If you could be based anywhere besides DFW, where would you go? LA, when we when we were considering like leaving Charlotte and trying to decide where we wanted to go, LA was actually an option for us. We have like large lifted trucks, a Hummer and a Jeep. So there was no way we were going out to LA. Like we really considered it and we really like thought about it because like he does have a friend out there. He did have a job opportunity out there that was gonna be great. But ultimately I just, I mean, we can't afford a million dollar property. That's just not happening for us. So that's kind of what ended up ruling LA out, but their flying is really great. They don't really do Europe and Europe is probably my favorite place to fly. So that would suck, um, but yeah, probably LA. Oh, this eyeliner is NYX professional makeup. What's the point? She thick, so I like this eyeliner. I don't know if it's like my absolute favorite, but I do like this eyeliner. Have you ever had any scary plane ride experiences? I love traveling, but flying is scary. So the scariest flight I've ever been on was actually because of a medical emergency, not because like I didn't think the plane was gonna land or something like that. And it was specifically because I was like within my first year of being a flight attendant, probably my first six months of being a flight attendant, I'm using Maybelline the falsies as mascara. This is basically just gonna put color back in my lashes for my false lashes. But it was because we had a six month old baby have a seizure on board and the baby belonged to a single young mother. So it was a mother that I would guess her, probably no older than 20 by herself with her baby. That was like my first like real medical experience and like just her being so young, the baby being so young, that was terrifying to me. Now obviously like the situation got handled correctly and everything worked out fine, but that was still terrifying. A lot of people are asking me for like wild stories and maybe like I'll make like a whole video on like some of like my crazy stories. So I'll do like a story time telling y'all some of the crazy stories I've had. So yeah, I'll save that. Top five favorite cities, Naples, Italy or Napoli. Loved it. You have to know where to go though because that is supposed to be like one of the most dangerous cities. I really like London. London grew on me a lot because I fly London a lot. So I really do like London now, but I don't think 
that probably would have been one of my top ones earlier. I really like Madrid and Barcelona. And so I would probably say like one of the cities in Ireland would probably be like up there on my list. Now I'm going to do my lashes. I'm gonna do those off camera really quickly just because I don't wanna like completely mess it up. Okay, so my lashes are on, they're looking good. So there we go. Now I'm gonna move on to the lips. Have you ever done international flights as far as New Zealand, Australia? No, because Charlotte didn't have flights like that. Like we didn't fly that far out of Charlotte, but maybe in Dallas, I'll start seeing a little bit more like of those long haul stuff because they do like Asia, South America, Auckland is coming soon. They're gonna do Europe and stuff like that. So I'll probably see more long hauls here than I ever did in Charlotte. Would you ever switch airlines? I don't plan to, I don't intend to. That's not to say would I never do it but I don't have the current intention to switch airlines how much do you fly on a month when you're on reserve I love all of your vlogs you are awesome thank you so much all right so let's grab a lip product so I'm gonna grab this Mac studio eyeliner this is nothing special or eyeliner this is a lip liner I'm gonna grab this Mac studio lip liner it's nothing special I got this in like some pack of TJ Maxx or something like that I can't even remember how much do I fly on a reserve month really depends depends on the month. So reserve in like the winter, so we're talking like January, February, you really don't fly much at all. And I don't pick up flying. I would say 40 hours or less in the winter. Now in the summer, you probably get close to maxing out or you're gonna max out, which basically means like you'll fly like 85 hours or whatever your airline's max time is in the summer. Cause there's lots more flying in the summer. You get a lot more like seasonal flying and stuff. This foundation still looks crazy in the middle of my lips, but I don't have anything to wipe it off. So we're gonna work with it. But now I'm gonna go into the inside and just color all in with the lip liner. I still should have probably wiped off that foundation, but whatever, we're here now. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Still at the bottom. <laughs> Compression cubes or regular packing cubes? I use regular packing cubes. If you go watch that, like how I pack my carry-on, which I'll have linked down below, you'll see exactly the packing cubes I pack with, and I pack with them every single trip. Somebody said Republic Airways or PSA airline. I have no idea. I don't know much about either of those airlines. From things I've been told from other people, Republic Airline is more strict on tattoos, but like other than that, I actually don't know. And I don't want to even say that because like, I don't like to give knowledge that doesn't come from me, if that makes sense. Like not to say I don't trust other people, but when you're getting like secondhand information, that's really hard to reiterate. So take that for what you will. But I don't know much about either airline to be honest. All right, as a flight attendant, how do you make time for the gym? Oh, also this is like my go-to lip color. I get asked this by y'all a lot and that is Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit and this color is Nude peach love 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 this color so I definitely love this and I also love the NYX liquid suede collection I did get asked that in one of the questions what is your go-to lip product those are my go-to lip product so as a flight attendant how do you make time for the gym so this is continuous setting mist by Morphe so I'm gonna spray up my face I put the gym as a priority and this comes with anything in your life anything that you consider a priority you're gonna make time for whether that's a hobby, whether that's a person, whether that's whatever. And you know what? I take some pre-workout and then I'm like, well, now you gotta go because you're gonna be antsy and you gotta work it out. So sometimes just even taking the pre-workout is basically the push to go because then after that you have no excuses, you have to go. So yeah, that would be it. It's just like really pushing yourself to do stuff because I'm busy and it's not just like as a flight attendant I'm busy. It's like as a YouTuber, as an editor, as a CEO, as a businesswoman, as a flight attendant, I'm busy. So, so it's not that I have all the time in the world to go to the gym, I just make it habit I make it a priority and so I do it and here we go this is the final makeup look once again please comment down below your favorite makeup product cannot wait to see you guys next time bye <laughs>